Okay, welcome to our fourth module and for this module, we'll start dipping our toes into uh, sports tourism and we'll talk about sports tourism as a specific discipline or branch under the whole tourism discipline. There will be two video lectures under the specific modules and first we'll talk about what is sports tourism and second we'll talk about uh, sustainable development goals and how it is related to sports tourism. So again, this video is conceptualizing what sports tourism is. So sports tourism is defined as the travel for non-commercial reasons to participate or observe sporting activities away from the home range or residence. So important elements here, it should be non-commercial reasons. So for example, you're a professional athlete and you are attending a, a sports event. Uh, representing your country or representing your institution or school and you're not paid for it or if you are paid for it it's really more of in terms of prices or funding or support then you are still considered as a sports tourist but if you are um, for example a, a professional athlete who is invited to a certain institution to uh, provide training or uh, to engage in work no then uh, probably you cannot be uh, considered as a sports tourist. Probably uh, a business tourist, but not a sports tourist because you're doing the sports as a training, so that's a um, for purposes of uh, commercial work. Um, also, other important concepts are um, you are a sports tourist whether you are participating in the sport that you are visiting in another place or country or you can only be an observant and still consider yourself a sports tourist. Later on, we will be able to discuss about the different categorizations of what a sports tourist is based on the level of engagement of activity he or she has in relation to the sport that she is uh, going to um, be participating in uh, in the destination. And again, you are considered a sports tourist if it is not your residence area. So, for example, if you are from Manila and you uh, engaged in uh, the uh, Southeast Asian Games here in the Philippines, I wouldn't consider you as a sports tourist. But for example, athletes from different countries uh, of the ASEAN, they went here to engage in the sports activities. They would be considered, when aside from athletes, professional athletes, they're also considered as sports tourists to the Philippines. So who is a sports tourist? So a sports tourist could be individuals or groups of people who actively participate or possibly participate in competitive or recreational sport while traveling to and or staying in places outside the usual environment as a primary activity. So for instance, you went to a certain place and your motivation to go to that destination is to be able to engage in a specific sport as a spectator or as a participant. Whether that's competitive sport, like for example, you're an athlete to uh, a regional games or recreation, like for example, you just want to watch uh, a uh, dragon boat or you want to join a certain marathon or Sparta. And that's your main a motivator to go for a tour to the destination then you are called a sports tourist now who is a tourism sport uh, these are persons traveling and or staying outside their usual environment whether domestic or international and participating in actively or passively a competitive recreational sport as a secondary activity so for example you went to Hong Kong your primary motivator of going there is for leisure and for, uh, let's say, shopping. And then, within your itinerary, you decided to go and watch a dragon boat race. Now, you are not considered a sports tourist because a sports tourist would go there with the primary motivation of going to the dragon boat race. But you, part lang siya ng itinerary mo. Secondary activity lang siya. So, uh, we would not categorize that person as a sports tourist but rather a tourism sport 
So, pag primary mong motivation, ang pagpunta sa destination, ang sport, you are a sports tourist. And if secondary mo lang siya, na part ng itinerary mo when going to a destination, you are considered a tourism sport. So, I hope that's clear. Now, when we talk about sports tourism, we just don't talk about like the actual like professional sport or the sport that you can like see within Olympic events. There are also other like health-related and physical activities that could be also um, uh, be aligned with sports tourism. So, syempre, the first uh, domain would be the hallmark events in relation to sports. Like, for example, Olympics regional games such as the sea games and asian games and also for example sa states we have also the super bowl no so big sabihin these events are really the main feature or spectacle is the sporting event um it can also be related to some sort of outdoor recreation that has always been there like for example adventure tourism uh, for example you want to go do uh, mountaineering or canoeing or skiing if social ka, nakakapunta ka sa mga skiing areas um, these are called outdoor recreation um, destinations no adventure tourism destinations and then also another motivation uh, that is sports tourism related are health, fitness and wellness motivations no for example, joining yung mga 5K, 10K, 21K marathon, usually these are for like domestic or like nearby countries kung ito ay international. So, uh, basically, it's, yeah, merong spirit of competitiveness, especially doon sa mga professional runners talaga and talagang high-stake runners. Pero like, meron din mga umaaten na ganito mga marathon for purposes of like mag-recreation but, and also to be able to practice and um take care of their health and fitness. So yon, that's also within the related domains under sports tourism. Now remember that we have the seven um, tourism sectors, which are destination, attraction, events management, accommodation, transportation, intermediaries, and policy sector. Now, basically what makes a certain tourism product, a sports tourism product, is basically the attraction is related to sports. Now, what is the um, characteristic or element of the attraction that makes it a, a tourism attraction uh, that is sports related? So the first one is the tourist or human element of the attraction. So the person who is traveling to a certain attraction in order for us to make it or to call it a sports tourist attraction is traveling away from the home to the extent that their behavior is motivated by sports-related factors. Ibig sabihin, pag tinanong mo yung mga tourists na nandoon sa attraction na yun, like for example sa Spartan, or doon sa mga marathons, or doon sa bay kung saan ginagawa yung mga dragon boating, at saka mga canoeing, pag tinanong mo sila, bakit ka pumunta dito? Ah, pumunta ako dito because of the uh, dragon boat, or I went here because of the marathon, then the behavior or the motivation and the image the tourist has for that specific destination or that specific attraction is tourism related or i mean sports related then that's one element that is ticked no na na check na natin the tourism human element um is uh motivated to go to that attraction because it's sport related Next, the second element is the nucleus or the basic attraction. Again, attraction could be an activity or a destination. So the site where the tourist um, experience is produced and consumed is sports tourism, is a sports activity. No? And that's the nucleus of the attraction. So ibig sabihin, when say nucleus, ito yung main thing that is happening in the given destination, in the given attraction site. No, that uh, this actual sports ha activity happening. So again, the first one, the tourist motivation to go to that attraction is sports related. The second one, in the main attraction, the main thing that is happening or the main activity that is going on is related to sports. And the third element is markers. Information shared about the nucleus of attraction, which is a sporting activity, is transmitted consciously or unconsciously to potential tourists. Now, all over the Philippines, there are so many sporting sites, no? Kahit sa barangay 
nyo merong built na basketball court, right? There are uh, football courts all over the Philippines. Konti lang, pero meron, no? There are tennis courts in the Philippines. But not all those sites that you know, host sporting activities is a sports tourism destination. In order to make a certain destination a sports tourism destination or attraction, it has to have one, tourists going there with a motivation of engaging in sports. Two, sporting activities being done there as a main thing. And three, that there should be some sort of you know, movement or marketing that basically presents that as, hey, tourists come here because there are sports activities happening here. So probably the difference between, let's say, um, yung barangay uh, nyo na mga basketball court versus, let's say, yung mga basketball na nangyayari sa MOA Arena pag merong UAAP, yung isa, nangyayari yung sporting activities doon pero hindi naman nag-aaya ng mga turista no whether consciously or unconsciously no probably may mga ligang pambarangay pero hindi talaga siya meant to be na maging attraction sa mga turista pero for example you look at UAAP that is being done no makakaaya ka talaga for instance ng mga turista na from domestic tourists probably no so again what makes a certain attraction a tourist attraction is that it is being marketed as a tourist attraction. So yon. So again, the three elements. First, the tourism, um, or the tourist, sorry, um, is motivated to go there because of a sports activity. Two, the main activity there is a sports activity. Number three, um, there are marketing, um, marketing factors or marketing activities that tells tourists that hey, this is a sports tourism site attraction. Now, what are the different tiers of sports tourism attraction? Ano yung hierarchy nila? So first, we have the primary attraction. So these attractions have the power to influence a visitor's decision to travel to a destination based solely on that attraction. So let's say the event is SEA Games or World Olympics. That is a primary sports attraction kasi the tourists who would be going to that country would most likely have the sole or the main priority motivation of engaging in, participating, or spectating the sports event. Now, yun yung kanyang main na hata. Sports talaga. Next, the sports attraction is considered as a secondary attraction when the sports attraction is known to a person prior to the visit but are not critical to the decisions in the travel itinerary. So, ayun nga, for example, you know, I went to Sri Lanka one time and uh, my main goal there, my main itinerary is to be able to attend a research conference. But I also heard that cricket is a very um, sikat na sport there. So, um, it became part of my itinerary. Hindi nga lang natuloy because I didn't have time. But uh, that is an example of a secondary attraction. My main goal of going to a certain destination is not really sport. But I do know that prior to the trip that there's a sport activity that I can visit, I can put it like a secondarily uh, priority in my um, in my itinerary. No? So that's a secondary attraction. And finally, we have tertiary attraction. So, unknown to the traveler prior to the visit but may serve as centers for entertainment or activity once the visitor is already at the destination. So, for example, no, uh, si ate, she goes to Bali, Indonesia and her main goal is just cultural and beach related tourism. And she is not aware that there is like wakeboarding or surfing uh, sports that are happening in that area. She only finds it out when she is already there in Bali and then she she decides to watch or she decides to try out surfing. Um, that's an example of tertiary attraction. So, ano ulit yung difference? The first is yung primary attraction ay uh, the sporting activity or attraction is the main reason why a certain person is going to a certain destination. A secondary attraction is a certain activity or certain sports attraction is something that is already known to the uh, tourist 
prior to going to the place and places it as a secondary or not so priority in the itinerary. But still, um, aware siya doon sa attraction na yon prior to going to the destination. And third is tertiary attraction. Um, that person originally didn't put it in the uh, in the uh, itinerary and has no idea that a sporting activity is happening in the in the in the destination. When that person uh, goes to the destination, they find out about the existence of the sporting activity and then joins it incidentally. So, pag incidental lang, tertiary attraction siya. Now, sports is quite a different field of tourism compared to others that are already known like for example gastronomic tourism dark tourism shopping tourism culture and leisure tourism heritage tourism nature and ecotourism kakaiba ang sports tourism um, and these are some of the unique features of sport that makes it a viable um, possibility for tourism development to happen in a given area or for a specific event related to sport so um, each sport has its own set of rules that provide characteristic spatial and temporal structures. Like for example, basketball has a different requirement in terms of the space where it will be done and the amount of time that nakababad yung mga tao in terms of, you know, uh, being spectators. Kasi may specific time na, you know, basketball runs in a given, like, go. And then we have wakeboarding. Iba din ang ang area ng wakeboarding kasi nasa may beach area siya and there's also a different uh, time element for wakeboarding kasi there are certain times of the year na hindi season na malakas ang alon no so maaaring hindi yon ang magandang season for wakeboarding and of course marathons diba there are so many ways that you can imagine marathons you can do like an urban marathon where you do it in the streets at taas ng skyway or you can do like marathons somewhere in uh, in the rural area and then of course iba din ang esports because esports you need an enclosed space and then where you put the audience so, hindi siya katulad ng ibang types of tourism like, um, let's say, um, dark tourism na merong general specifications that you can apply to all types of dark tourism attractions for all types of gastronomic tourism attractions. But for sports, your consideration for every sport in relation to tourism would be different. Kasi nga, like we said, the difference in terms of spatial and temporal nature of the sport would need different requirements. So, mas tricky ngayon siya. Kasi like for example, surfing tourism under the sports tourism paradigm has a different way of being planned compared to let's say, someone who's going for a basketball specta uh, spectatorship or uh, football spectatorship or esports spectatorship. No, Iba-iba ang planning for that. Kaya, medyo mas mahirap ang ang sports tourism compared to other types of tourism and there should really be an integration between the sports commission or committees of sport in the space where the or in the events management uh, and also tourism so lagi silang magkasama uh, to make sure that all requirements of the sports and all requirements of the tourism are seen and um, addressed next uh, we do know that majority of sports are spectacle. So, competition relating to physical prowess and um, the goal orientation and competition and contest-based aspects of sports makes it exciting to participate in and watch. So, it really attracts viewers because there's so many things to see and it uh, there are many things to feel while you are there. Now, that adds up to the whole tourism experience. So, there. And the reason why sports is a viable tourism attraction is that sport is characterized by its playful nature. I mean, it's stressful to watch. No, but generally, the reason why we do sports and why we watch sports is that it makes us feel better. It makes our adrenaline rush, right? And has notions of uncertain outcomes. So, ibig sabihin, um, you can go to the same place and watch the same sporting event, but you would see things different for every episode or every session that you go to a certain tourism spot. So therefore, the market never fades after one visit because after one visit, 
you don't know anymore the outcome for the next visit. So, ang tendency mo, ay sige, punta ako kasi baka may ibang outcome na mangyari, baka ibang team naman ng manalo. So, kaya siya exciting. And it also has sanction display. I mean, most sports wants the sportsmen to be watched. You know, so it's a spectacle as I said. So in this video, we were able to conceptualize tourism uh, in relation to sports. Um, we talked about who is the sports tourist. We talked about tourism sport. We talked about the different uh, hierarchies of attractions in relation to sport. We talked about the three elements of attractions that addresses the sports relatedness of it. And then we also um, discussed about the unique nature of sport and why is it a viable activity for tourism to be developed.